everyone, and welcome back to another True Crime Tuesday. I'm back in my own house, <laughs> which I'm really happy about. Um, I mean, I do miss my family, and I was sad to leave them, but I'm really happy to be back in my own room with my own stuff. I want to apologize in advance if you can hear banging. Um, there's a pretty bad storm going on outside, and someone uh, one of my neighbors behind me hasn't closed their gate and it keeps slamming. I put the gain down on the microphone so it doesn't pick up too much background noise, but I apologize if you can hear that. So let's get into today's case. Today's case is about Logan Schindelman. So Logan Schindelman was 19 years old when he disappeared on May 20th, 2016. He lived in Dumpswater, Washington with his grandmother, Jenny, and his half-sister, Chloe. There is very little known about Logan's father. Um, and while his mother was in his life and he had a great relationship with his mother, she didn't actually raise him. Uh, his grandmother got custody of both kids and she raised both him and his half-sister. Um... Logan was part Caucasian, part African American, and part Saudi Arabian. His father was from Saudi Arabia. Logan was very popular in school. He got really good grades. He was the star of the football team, and he had a uh, he had a lot of friends. He he was he had a very active social life, and his friends were really important to him. Uh, and he was planning to attend Eastern Washington University, where he would share a dorm with one of his friends. Now, one night, he attended a party with his friends, and there was a girl there who spent the entire night verbally abusing him with racial slurs. She was accosting him about his ethnicity, and this upset Logan very much, and he called his grandmother to pick him up early from the party, and after that, he completely retreated. He stopped being social. He blamed his friends for not defending him the way he would have defended them. He didn't understand why none of them stuck up for him, and he became very isolated and just didn't want to hang around them anymore. He even decided not to attend Eastern Washington University, but instead to attend Washington State University, which was about 300 miles away from Tom's Water. Ah, uh, Tom Water. Um, another byproduct of what happened at that party is that he started becoming very curious about his background, and he wanted to learn more about um, his family. So he found one of his aunts named Tina on social media, and the two of them met for dinner. And um, afterwards, Tina said that Logan asked her not to tell anyone about their meeting because he didn't want his grandmother to know that he was meeting up with family members. But his grandmother said that Logan told him about the meeting as soon as he came home from dinner, and that she didn't mind that he met with family. So there's conflicting stories coming from either side of the family, and it's pretty clear that there's some tension between the family. Um, so after leaving for university, he found it very hard to adjust to life there, and he decided not to go back the following year. He instead decided to uh, get a job in Tumwater, and he uh, did mostly manual labor, he did uh, various jobs to make ends meet. Um, but he made no effort whatsoever to reconnect with his old friends, and he was still very isolated from everyone. In the meantime, his half-sister's boyfriend, Jake, had also moved into their home with his two kids. Now, Jake had a history of violence, although apparently he was never violent in the house. Um, Logan just didn't like him, and he didn't get along with him at all. So, Ginny said that around this time, Logan 
started focusing on his social life again. He started coming home really late, and he started hanging out with a crowd of people that she had never met. But he would come home smelling of weed. And he also became very um, paranoid and scared at this time. Like, he started behaving just paranoid around this time. So, on the morning of May 19th, he told Ginny that he had had an epiphany. And she really wanted to talk to him about that, but she had to go to work. So, she said to him, you know, let's talk about this later. I really want to finish our conversation about this. And he agreed to that. But it would be the last time that she would ever see him. So when he didn't come home that evening, she tracked his phone and she found that it was pinging in Olympia, where his mother lived. Um, the phone was registered to Ginny, so she used, she could use the Find My Phone app to track it. Um, so she just assumed that he was with his mother catching up and she didn't, you know, worry about it. So she went to bed. And when she woke up the next morning and Logan still wasn't home, she started to worry a little bit because he never spent the night at his mother's house. So she called his mother and she said that Logan wasn't with her and that Logan hadn't visited her the night before either. Now she wasn't panicking yet at this point because he was an adult. He kind of came and went as he pleased and she wasn't too concerned about the fact that he hadn't been home. <laughs> but she was still worried because she hadn't seen him. So she decided to file a missing persons report at the police office. But it was a Saturday and it was very understaffed. So they couldn't uh, do it that day. So she decided to spend the rest of the weekend looking for him by herself. And then on Monday, she started panicking because it had been four days. She hadn't heard from him. So she went back to the police office to file that missing person's report. She gave them all the details that she could think of, including all the information on his car. And when the police ran the information from his car, they found that it had been involved in an incident on the interstate on May 20th. It had drifted over four lanes and up at a standstill on the center divider and it was still in gear. Now this really shocked Ginny because the car was registered in her name and yet nobody had contacted her to let her know about this incident. Now because the car wasn't badly damaged and they didn't suspect any foul play, they didn't process the car. They just gave it back to Ginny. And while she was driving it home, she found that Logan's wallet with $25 cash in it, his debit and credit cards, his driver's license, and his cell phone were all still in the car. And this really alarmed her because Logan was one of those young guys that was always on his phone and he wouldn't have left it. There was also a bag of groceries in the car. So she took it back to police and they decided then to process it, but they told her that any information they found at this point would most likely be contaminated because so many people had handled the car at this point. Um, so police started taking his disappearance more serious now and they decided to look into his cell phone records to help them find out where Logan was the day that he disappeared. So they found that his phone pinged for about 45 minutes, two hours away from his house. And shortly after, he drove along the interstate back to Dumbwater. But he seemingly drove back and forth a couple of times on the interstate. And then his phone died. Either the battery died or someone switched it off. So police then decided to check the 911 logs to see if anyone called 911 around the time that his car was abandoned. And they found two calls. One was from a truck driver who said that, who called 911 and said that he saw a car drifting over four lanes and crashed into or like hit the center divider and he saw the driver jump into the passenger seat and then 
get out that door and he ran across four lanes of traffic into the woods. Now he described this man as a tall, thin, white man with either brown or red hair. And that does not sound like Logan at all. So police used cadaver dogs to search a two mile radius around the car, but they didn't find anything. Uh, the dogs didn't pick up Logan's scent anywhere, and then they also used helicopters with thermal imaging, but again, they didn't find anything. So then the second call was um, from a woman who called 911 to see to say that she had seen an African-American man walking down the street naked from the waist down. And according to her description, it sounded like it was Logan. Again, they brought in cadaver dogs to search the area, but they didn't find anything and they couldn't pick up Logan's scent anywhere. Um, then they talked to his mother and she told them that he had recently started asking a lot of questions about his father and she had told him everything she knew about him. So police started questioning if maybe Logan chose to leave and wanted to go be with his father in, who lived in Saudi Arabia. But he left his driver's license and his passport was expired, so there's no way he could have left the country. Um, then they turned their focus to Jake, the half-sister's boyfriend. A lot of family members believed he might have something to do with Logan's disappearance. But Ginny said that there were never any fights in the house and that they just ignored each other. And Jake took a polygraph test and passed, and after that he was cleared of all suspicion by the police. So Logan's case went cold, and they couldn't find any answers. And on the one-year anniversary of his disappearance, media started covering the case again. And police started getting new leads. One lead was a woman who called in on um, in June 20. 2017, and she said that on the morning of May 20th, she drove past Logan's car, which was then parked on the side of the road on the interstate uh, while she was heading to work, and the car didn't seem to have any damage, and there was nobody in the car. And she said that she then passed the car again on her way back home from work, so presumably early evening. And the hood was open, and there were three guys standing near the car. One of them she, she believes is Logan, and then there were two white guys with him. And she described one of them as a tall, thin, white guy, which sounds exactly like the description the trucker gave of the guy getting out of the car. Um, she went to the police office to get a sketch made of this guy, but to this day there have been no... Um, there's been no information on this guy and she couldn't get a sketch made of the second guy because she only saw him from the side. Now that's really all the information there is in this case. They have not found Logan or really gotten any new leads since then. So I'll get into some theories, but they're pretty much the same theories that you get in most disappearance cases. So the first theory is that he left to start a new life. Now I can understand his reasoning more than anyone else's because those racial slurs really got to him. He started questioning everything about himself. He started you know, questioning his life, how his friends were not loyal to him. He started questioning the family that he didn't know and basically who he was. He was struggling with himself. Um, so I get that he would want to run away and be like, I'm going to Saudi Arabia to find my dad. But as I said, he couldn't have left the country. He didn't have the documentation. And I don't think he would just leave. Um, without telling anyone he wanted to tell Ginny something, but he just didn't get a chance to. So I don't think he would have just left his grandmother, who he obviously loved a lot, um, without telling her. Also, there were groceries in the car. He could have bought those to run away, but then why not take them? The fact, I think he more bought them to then go home. And it doesn't explain the sightings of the men, or at least the one man at the car. Then another theory is that he suffered from mental illness. He would be at the age where mental illness would, you know, um, 
start surfacing and I do believe that all the things that happened to him with the party and the university not working out and him starting to smoke weed that maybe that brought it on faster um, a lot of people that report that he was acting very paranoid and scared in the in the weeks leading up to his disappearance and that could be from the drugs but I mean it was weed I don't think it's gonna be that bad um, it could be mental illness and I'm definitely not ruling it out but then where is he you know um, he could have freaked out and ran into the woods and maybe even got injured and like died from the elements but I, I always question then where the body is. I know that there are cases where people aren't found by cadaver dogs, but then a few years later their bones are found in that exact area, so I know that a body can be missed. Um, but I see that seems to come up in a lot of cases, so I don't believe that the body is always missed. Um, are falling asleep um my personal theory that i didn't find anywhere like i found theories re related to foul play but not really full theories nobody really seems to know how the foul play the foul play would relate some people said that maybe he was part of a drug deal gone wrong but he was smoking weed it's not like he was doing hard drugs there are no indications for that and um the fact that he had an epiphany that he wanted to talk to Ginny about, I, I don't think he got involved in a drug deal gone wrong in those few hours after that. My personal theory is just that he was the victim of a random crime. I believe that his car broke down that morning and that's why it was saw that's that's why that woman saw it on the side of the interstate. And that those two men stopped to help him out in the early evening and that they either got into an argument or it was just a crime of opportunity that they killed him and then one of them stole his car, crashed it, and that's the guy that Trucker saw getting out of his car. That doesn't explain the woman who saw the African-American man who was naked from the waist down, but there's also no, no confirmation that that was Logan. Um... So that's personally what I believe. I believe that he was just the in the wrong place at the wrong time and he just became the victim of a random crime of opportunity, which is why all his personal belongings were also left behind in the car. I don't know. Um, I just find it hard to believe the theories that he ran away on his own and also that he suffered from mental illness. I don't know. I'm not ruling it out. I just wonder where he is then. Same with running away. Um, it, 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 it reminds me a bit of the Lars Mittang case where he people think he suffered from mental illness and that's why he disappeared. But he was in a different country where people didn't know him. He disappeared near his home where everyone knew him. And I assume that this case was covered nationwide so that people in the United States would have seen his face and that he can't just disappear. Granted, it was four days before police started investigating his disappearance, so you can get far in four days. But I just don't believe that that he would just disappear and not be found, especially with mental illness, that 